I'm Nige. And I'm Anders. Welcome to What Is... Dot, 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 another episode where we discover or try and work out the finding the, the history of tea. And what is... And today it's What Is Lapsan Souchon. Yeah. Which is a lovely word. It is a lovely thing to say, Lapsan Souchon, isn't it? And I must say, this is probably my favourite style of tea. I'm a big fan of it. I remember having it years and years and years ago, I was in my early 20s, and thinking, oh, that's nice, but a bit too much. But now I'm at that stage in my life. I'm, oddly enough, both of us, were, we were texting each other this morning, weren't we, about what we were going to do tonight. And it was a horrible day. It was raining. It was it was just a miserable day. And I, I was at this one, I thought, oh, I fancy a bit of, fancy a bit of comfort. So I had a... Lapsan Souchon. And Anders said, Oh, I'm just drinking a, a cup of. A cup of Lapsan Souchon myself. Yes. Because it's horrible outside. And we're. It, we're there's something months. very comforting about this, isn't there? Yes. So, yes. Um, and before it gets too. It? Before it gets too cold, I'm just going to take a sip of it first off. Uh, yes, yeah. Just because that smokiness, that's gorgeous. If you've never had this, it smells like a campfire. It really I'm does. It's the and it smoke... tastes like one as well. Yes, the, the smokiness is off the scale. Mm. Right. So and it's not. It's not an overly bitter tea as well. Part of the smoking process just cuts that bitterness out a little bit because it, it might be to do with the leaves as well. But we'll we'll get back to that. Well, when... you see, Nigel and I were, were talking about this. A bit earlier on about the history, comparing our notes, two slightly different stories of, of where Lapsang comes from. Well, Lapsang comes from one place or originated in one place. Which what was the region? The Qing Dynasty. Hmm. Q-I-N-G. Yes. And uh, that uh, is in the... Fujian province, where an awful lot of tea comes from in, in China. We, you know, Anders, if this channel ever makes any money, we're spending on a trip to there. <laughs> yes, it's the place <laughs> to go. It really is. I would love to go there. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so we've we've got a very similar story, but they differ slightly. Um, yeah, you go for your story first. Well, yeah, the way I see it, is that um, the first black tea was apparently Lapsang Souchon, and it was created by mistake. Um, the villagers had just harvested a whole load of tea, and they were going to make green tea, and they had harvested a whole season's worth of green tea, um, and then the villagers spied uh, an army coming towards them. So they thought, sod that. I'm off. So off they went, but what they did was they, they covered up all the leaves with covers and whatever like that. And to, to the soldiers, it looked quite enticing just to lie down. So as far as the story goes, soldiers laid down on these uh, on these beds of green tea to all intents and purposes, moving around a lot, doing an awful lot, so therefore oxidising it. Um, and accordingly, after about three or four days, that off they went. Villagers go back, whole harvest, absolutely knackered. So basically, all their tea has started oxidizing. Um, and also, it smells of dirty soldiers. <laughs> so, what they did in, in, in a way to try and get rid of that is to basically just put those leaves over. Uh, pine fire and just let the smoke occur. That's apparently how Lapsang Souchon came. That's about, well, apparently how the first black tea came about and how they actually dealt with the smell of it. Well, the story I read. Just to finish off. Well, sorry. I do beg your pardon. Nobody in their right mind in China would drink that stuff. So they basically thought, well, we can't get rid of it. Took it down south to the coast, gave it to a Dutch guy, Dutch trader, who took it away. 
came back a couple of months later and said, it's a hit, guys. Can I have some more? <laughs> oh, there's some more. And they were like, oh, really? Okay. So, yes, that's that's my story. It ended there. I like it. Uh, yes, I like that story. But the story I, I read, another bit on the internet, was the workers had got all their tea harvest in and they were it's just of drying it. Spied the army coming across hill yonder. Yeah. But, oh, my God. We're going to lose a harvest. And it's all drying, ready, all drying out. And they, they thought, we can't, we'll lose it if the army gets here. So they, they quickly dried under some pine fires, gathered it up, then legged it. You see, they are similar stories. There's a grain of truth in there somewhere. Perhaps. Yes. So there's an army involved. But the yeah. most important thing is the flavour. It comes from uh, pine smoke. Pine smoke, and they you got different flavors depending on how high the tea is above, um, above the smoke. Ideally, it's the, the, the smoke's going to be cool before it hits the the tea. Yeah, uh, but quite interesting that the the leaves that they use usually in the real good quality teas they use just the buds or the one or two leaves at the tips. This might use leaves number four or five, six, bigger leaves from further down the plant because yeah. don't. They're not dependent on that, the delicate flavours, because the smoke... The smoke through. is I kind of... I yeah. think this is why this one's not quite so bitter, because yeah. it's got leaves. But I like it very much. I love it. Now, um, there's a tea shop, I've mentioned it many times, very close to me, a place called It's Tea. Absolutely adore the place. Um, and I just took some Lapsang Souchong, because I hadn't tasted it any for years probably a year or two back and and i fell in love with it i really did and um uh while i was being served uh she said i'll tell you what's really good get yourself some good um oh great oh great that's the stuff i could completely i was going bergamot bergamot what does that make oh great <laughs> and um add just a little sousson of lap souchong. <laughs> I didn't plan that. That came out quite nicely. A little souchong, Very lap sang souchong. Um, and it really does. You've still got the the heart of it being... It's really bergamot. just a tiny, tiny pinch. And if you think it's too much, half it. And that's, yeah. that's how much you need. It really it is. Because it's... One thing you can't let on at lap sang souchong is subtlety. It's quite a bold flavour, isn't it? I've tried that Lapsang Souchon uh, Earl Grey cocktail. It yeah. is amazing. It is lovely, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. Uh, no, I've said this is my favourite tea, but it's not one I could drink every day. No, 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 no. It's, you've, I've got to be in the right mood. It's, it's like a fine whiskey. You don't. You don't want to glug it, you savour it. And, and that's like this, This it's got to be savoured. It's, it's a comforting thing. I was reading on one website, it says, oh, it's, it's to, when it's a cold winter's night, this is the tea you want. And that that's exactly what you it want. Really it really is. It, it's a very comforting, warm. Uh... Right. But here's, right. Okay, this is really interesting. Um, It's not going to be for you out there. Certainly not night, but I'm going to go through with it anyway. Um, I I like a little. I I like. I'm a bit of a fragrance man. I like certain fragrances, and there is a brand called Maison Marjolaine, and they do uh, a fragrance called By the Fireplace. Okay, and next time you get down, I'm going to give you a little sniff of it. Because there is a similarity between the two of them. Ooh, that's Lip, interesting. The Lapsan Souchon and By the Fireplace. Anyway. And just save yourself a bit of money and just dip your finger in the tea and just... <laughs> <laughs> it's that's the same thing, Anders. Saves a bit of money. Oh, <laughs> bathing this stuff. Can you imagine <laughs> bathing it? <laughs> Wait, you may as well just light a fire outside because... That is 
when you take your when you got back from a bonfire night or something, you know, all your clothes stink of smoke. Yeah. That's what this tastes like. It's yeah. just incredible. That's what I need to do, stand over a bonfire like that. Yeah. Anyway, I think we've talked about this enough. I think we have. But I've got the gist that we quite like this tea. <laughs> uh honestly, yeah. And is it going to an end? Springtime springtime is coming. Is is the time for this? I don't know. No, I drink this all year round because it's yeah. all about the feeling. Sometimes if it's a bit rainy and you think, hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pick me up tea. It's it's that comfort thing. It's a it's a cuddle cup of tea, isn't it? Whenever you need a little bit of yes, a cuddle or a comfort. Yeah. This the tea for it. Right. Every household should have some of this tea just for emergencies. Yes. So there we go. You now know how we feel unequivocally, I would suggest, about Lapsang Souchon uh, and its history. Uh, thanks for watching us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, see you soon. Bye. Goodbye.